Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, the O-line's time to shine. Also spotlighting a Cowboy defender for Craig Bull. And we hear from offensive coordinator Zach Kitley as he opens up year number two in West Texas. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Great to be with you again on Locked On at Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. And always appreciate those making us their first listen on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, helping you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free today at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College to post your job for free today. Terms and conditions apply he's the only chris level i'm casey cowan and chris set pretty soon uh to leave the 806 the friendly confines of west texas and again well the long arduous journey to laramie wyoming season opener is coming up very soon and just a couple more opportunities to visit here chris as we get ready for this kickoff joey mcguire and year number two and somebody that will be Focusing in on here today as we take a closer look at the Wyoming defense via Tex offensive coordinator Zach Kitley, also year number two. And I think when you really consider what Texas Tech did last season offensively, we've touched on it clearly uh, as far as the challenges presented at the quarterback position and elsewhere. At the end of the day, it felt like much like the team. You got better as the season went on and you mostly successfully dealt with some adversity. And as far as the debut act, I think there's plenty to be happy with, uh, obviously, about that. Yeah, I, I think, um, I, I think you know, with this offense, um, I, I think, because we're talking the O-line, correct? You know, yeah. like the big boys. And I think that, you know, we've heard the same thing from the head coach, from the OC, and, and recently on this show from the O-line coach, <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's well documented. That, okay. We moved a few guys around, but it, 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 it seems to be just this remaining theme that they are absolutely convinced that this group is, is just a lot better than it was last year. And, and they have noticed it. They have been able to tweak their offense around it. Um, basically being able to do a few more different things and new things and all that because it is so much better and improved. Uh, and I, I think, you know, you've got, you know, some new pieces there, but I think they're, you know, and Cole Spencer, I don't, I think that helped the whole thing because he wasn't really a new piece. He was here for a full year before you, you threw him into this deal. But it, it's, it, this is one of the things that I'm, I guess I'm most excited to kind of see what this looks like as we start this journey here in this season is, is that, is that reality? I mean, is that true? Is that how much difference is there between this year and last year? And, you know, I, I talked to Tyler Shuck this week and he, cause I think, in fact, I asked him the question, when did you, when did you specifically know, oh, man, this is a different deal than what it was last year? And he basically told me like a few practices into the spring. So he basically telling me I, I knew really early on this was a, a, a very different deal. And again, keep in mind, you go back to bowl practices. Some of these guys had had worked at their new what, what would eventually be their new spots and swapping tackles and Dennis at guard and some different things going on. Uh, but I think it's interesting from the guy that they're protecting, you know, he, he knew very early that, okay, th this is just much different than what, what it was last year. And he saw their last, you know, he was under center for, for the, the, those last four games and that bowl game and all those things. So he kind of saw what it looked like at the tail end and then sees the beginning here. But I, I think he, he certainly was the one and he, he's obviously the most important factor here because you're you're ultimately trying to do all these things to protect him yeah no question and when you mentioned Dennis Wilburn you're mentioning a guy that on this show I think we've agreed uh could be argued as as your best offensive player a season ago in the 
the walk-on story and everything else that tied into that was just wild to uh, watch. And, of course, you mentioned uh, the position coach, Stephen Hamby, Red Raider offensive line legend in his own right, and uh, just something else about having that guy in charge, Chris. And I think a lot of us as Tech fans that clearly remember those years when he was on campus, you know, we're, we're really hoping that he would bring – some of that attitude, some of that nastiness, and some of that magic back to the offensive line fold here in Lubbock once again. And that was another part specifically that, yeah, much like with the team or the offense, uh, I thought as the season went on, there was some progress. I don't know if it ever, you know, bordered on pretty <laughs> or anything like that, but uh, specifically as a group, I, I do think, and credit to Coach Hanby, um, I, I do think they got better as the year went on. Yeah, and I, and I will tell you, I left the facility, I'm trying to remember what day it even is, but I left the facility the other day when I was up there for uh, do, doing stuff, and maybe it was one of those press conferences that we that we were at, and uh, I said, smoke break, huh? You know, he just laughed. He goes, yeah, I mean, people have been giving me a hard time about that. He goes, but you got the analogy right? I said, absolutely, I did. But yeah, I mean, back in that, back in those, because if, you, if you'd if have to go back and listen to a few shows ago, but yeah, he kind of was a made the analogy that Monroe Mills is doing so well at left tackle that it's like he gets his job done and he's got enough time to take a smoke break before he needs to do anything else. So it was kind of, it was just funny, but I'm thinking like, man, I don't know anybody that's uh, still smoking the cigs or burning down the heaters. Um, but uh, yeah, he had, he had my man uh, Monroe doing that in the backfield. Um, but, but yeah, but back in, uh, and, and this is what you want. If you can channel, the continuity that like when it was the Hamby era, you know, the Brandon Carter and Rylan Reed and Louis Vasquez and just kind of that core group. If you can channel um, that continuity because, you, you boy, you had the bulk of those guys at home in their spot, um, healthy, basically the bulk of the season. And as much as you want quarterback health, that that group right there is just as important. And, and I would say, you know, it's funny. I would say to you, you know who else is a sneaky and, – and I and I know Hamby's paying attention to, like, this position and this particular player. But you know who's a sneaky position and, and as far as in, importance or, or, you know, MVP type stuff in that if you remove him from the equation, I think you have a variety of, of problems that it creates. And that's Taj Brooks. Because Taj Brooks is so good at, at pass protection and that aspect of his game, I think this is what allows you to not have as many tight ends back, not to have to call so many running plays for your quarterback, not have to have the quarterback, okay, I, I don't see anything there, I'm going to tuck it and go. I get a little extra because I've got a legit running back that's 225 that'll pick up a blitz because it all works hand in hand. It, you know, Taj Brooks is not a no lineman, but I, I guarantee Kenny Perry will tell you, I trust Taj Brooks to be in there more so than these younger guys right now on key key downs because I can't get our quarterback killed, and I know that he won't allow that to happen. So I, I just think this aspect of your team and protecting uh, Tyler Shuck is just much better, or Baron Morton, uh, is much better than it, than it was. Yeah, we've had that conversation about that group of running backs and who maybe was going to step up behind Taj Brooks, and it pretty much just turned to – what you were describing there, which guy is going to be able to be relied upon uh, in some of those pass protection situations or just being asked to do a variety of things as a drive moves on and you're trying to go fast and, and keep guys on the field that obviously, uh, you know, a skill set that comes with some time on campus and experience and you can't really replace that. Taj Brooks has a ton of it. So hopefully he's in uh, the injury God's good graces throughout the year. But I I'm excited to see Cameron Valdez and others. Uh, who's going to take hold of that opportunity behind Brooks and, yeah, make a hand just like Brooks whenever it comes to protecting your quarterback. And it really sounds like this offensive line we're talking about, here's a uh, breaking news headline for you, is going to be key in this matchup <laughs> against the Wyoming Cowboys. Sounds like a pretty stout front, and as you mentioned, some veteran seasoning back in the fold for Craig Bull. Here is the aforementioned Red Raider offensive coordinator, Zach Kitley. First, today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. And these days, every new hire can feel like a huge gamble. And when we're talking about your livelihood or your business, that's not ideal, but never fear. That's where LinkedIn comes in to save the day by helping you find the best qualified candidates available fast and for free 
all on one easy to use and secure platform. So head on over right now to linkedin.com slash locked on college to take advantage of their simple but specific targeting tools, allowing you to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to consider. They go well beyond just resume data by using insights from your job posts and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates faster than anybody else. So go to linkedin.com slash locked on college today to identify the most qualified candidates and connect with them fast and for free. A bad hire could sink your ship, but just the right hire could take your business to new heights this year. And that's just one reason why it's no coincidence that small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So head on over right now to linkedin.com slash locked on college and post your job for free today. It's so easy. A Pac-12 commissioner could do it at linkedin.com slash locked on college to post that job for free today with LinkedIn jobs. Terms and conditions apply. Here is the aforementioned Red Raider offensive coordinator, Zach Kittley. Nickel-based uh, defense, you know, four down, uh, a, a little bit more one high than two high. Uh, again, you know, Coach Bowles, a defensive-minded head coach, and, and I think they kind of hang their hat on stopping the run first and foremost. And um, again, they, they do a really good job. You know, I think I think the strength of their their defense is in the uh, in the box, mainly the uh, defensive front. Um, so yeah, they do a really good job, and, and they got a lot of experience back, a lot of snaps played on defense coming back this year. And we were just talking about some ball carriers a moment ago, Chris, and I think that's one thing that maybe has been understated, not quite enough pay attention paid to it this offseason, is how nice it was a season ago to have two guys that really could turn, well, chicken spit into chicken soup. Uh, yards after contact was a specialty of theirs because it had to be that way because too early there was contact. And that's not the case anymore. You don't have that duo. You got one guy that is a, a proven commodity, a guy we've been talking about in Taj Brooks, but Sir Roger Thompson no longer there. And I wonder how that impacts a play caller's appetite to really continue to try, try to chop that wood, maybe when it is tough uh, in the early going. Do you think we see any kind of adaptation or any evolution you're expecting uh, from Zach Kitley with, uh, well, still a proven, but a whole lot more unproven among those ball carriers? Yeah, you, you know, I, I think you could uh, offer up a – because I've heard a few people do this, and, and I, I, I see where they're coming from at it, but I also think that there's a, a counterpoint to this. But because w what is the identity of this Texas Tech offense? Like, what's their bread and butter going to be? And I think Zach Kitley would tell you, because I don't know if they're going to be just all world at any one thing. I don't know if they have any one player that's – that's a just flat out stud. We've kind of talked about guys needing to emerge, yeah. but I think Zach's the beauty of what Zach does and his scheme is that it, it's similar to what Cliff wanted to do. And so that's kind of where I think he learned it is that we'll attack whatever your weakness is. We're going to be really good at really whatever we're doing. And we, we want to throw it. Yeah, sure. We want to run it. Yeah. Do we want to go tempo? Sure. Uh, do we want to go tight end heavy? We can do that. I mean, it's like, I think that you build an offense within a system that has got all kinds of um, answers to whatever questions you're going to ask uh, d during the course of a game with your personnel and your packages and all those things. So with that, you know, you're going to ask Taj to do a lot. I think you're going to ask Cameron Valdez to do uh, a bit too, but then there's also instances where, I think Dre McCray could get handed the football, not not throwing it to him, handed to him. Miles Price the same way. Uh, I think Nehemiah Martinez fits in that category as well. And and then I think there's there's times where we could see a lot of a, a two tight end game plan, and then times when you don't see those guys featured at all. It's all just kind of depends on you. You kind of get you, you as in Wyoming or Oregon or whoever you get to decide what we're going to major in here. You know, you, you're going to you're going to kind of get to decide who we try to feature by what you try to take away. And we'll try to hit you with that. And that is always what Cliff was good at. Like every defense has some sort of weakness and and you try to be good enough to exploit it. And uh, I think that, you know, that's the kind of the beauty of Zach's system. But I think that there's a lot of different guys that could be, you know, featured or. And, and, and I think the way – I think we heard uh, Juice Johnson say this the other day, hey, man, what happens when they try to take Jerron away? Well, 
we, we would welcome that because we got all these other guys. You can't really take any one guy away. We're not solely living or relying on us getting the ball, you know, to Jerron Bradley 12 times on the outside. We've got plenty of other options and weapons and play calls and schemes that we can, you know, really attack other things too. So anyway, it's kind of, because I mean, think about it. What, what, what is their, what are they hanging their hat on? And I would just say scoring points and, and good offense. Now, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's kind of, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that that, that's kind of the, the deal. Uh, um, and that's kind of like what you gave us once upon a time there. Uh, I don't want to screw it up. Their greatest weakness is the lack of no. Their greatest strength is the lack of a weakness. <laughs> yes, and I and I I think that this oh, like the oh. offensive side of the ball. Look at that two deep man. <laughs> There's just not any. I mean, Cameron Valdez maybe the youngest guy on that on that entire list of 24 to 28 guys or whatever yeah. it is. So there's just <laughs> not any holes there at all that where you're like, man, I'm really worried that it just doesn't exist. Um, and so, but again, you know, you're not you're not highlighting a bunch of first team all conference guys either. So you know, that's the the negative. But I, I like the positive a lot too. Yeah, I never – you're bringing up that cliff comparison and, hey, we're going to be adaptable uh, week to week to what the defense is dictating to us. I never knew how I felt about that because there's some old-school part of my football soul that was repulsed by such a notion that the defense is going to dictate anything to me. So know. there's still some thought where I feel like, hey, do you want to just try and really be good at something and hammer them with that? I don't know. Maybe it's just pride or ego that would get you in that kind of situation and then all of a sudden you're in big trouble – you know, the Cliff offensive years in some ways to me were wholly dissatisfying because I feel like there were a lot of glamour statistics and meaningless production, red zone bogging down, more threes than sixes sometimes. I, I don't know. There's a whole other debate, obviously, to have because I remember what the, the national rankings were statistically uh, for that Cliff Kingsbury offense. But I, I don't know. Maybe that's is that more of a modern era approach where you say, I'm going to outsmart these guys in the sense that I'm going to take uh, what they're giving or uh, is what I'm saying making sense? Cause I kind of feel like get off my lawn, old man. In a way. <laughs> no, I, I, I completely grasp what you're saying. I think that the real, if you're, if you're a realist and if you're at Texas tech, you, you, you say to yourself, we're never going to have like the best quarterback or best offensive line or best group of receivers that, you know, like we're not Ohio state or Bama to where we can go, Hey man, it's like what we're doing with the Nebraska thing the other day. Yeah. We're running right. Here's where we're going. Good luck. You Bully have no ball. chance to stop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you're never going to have that talent level, although I do think your talent level is getting better and all that. But I think where Cliff always came at it from is that the, part of it is playing for Mike, and you've seen every scheme known to man. And there's <laughs> yeah. there's while, while they're offering up questions via their scheme – there's always an answer somewhere. So you have to have a variety of, of A, B, C, D, E, and F on kind of what you want to do if a team decides. Because, I mean, gotcha. yeah. when, when the Blue Bloods, like the OU in Texas is back when Mike was here, when they, when they essentially, it was funny because whenever you were really good on offense, however, what they would do was when they would take away um, Torian Henderson and eliminate him from the game, and like basically say, we're stopping those swing passes. You're not going to get any run game at all. We're going to make you one dimensional. It bogged you down. Your third downs were bad and, and, and they had the speed to kind of get Torian was the kind of the secret. He was the yeah. X factor to use your point. But I think Zach and Cliff, they want to come at it from, we don't really want to tell you, you know, that if you eliminate this part, we're, we're just kind of stuck. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so, we're going to be a, a bit versatile. We're going to be, a, you know, and, and this is air raid principles, but it's morphed and changed over the years. Football has changed over the years. Um, and they are telling sure. you flat out based on the offseason, we've got to get faster. We need more game breakers. We need more explosive guys. So it makes everybody's life a bit easier. But I think it's kind of fast. I see your point, but I think that, that that's the way they look at it, uh, right, wrong or indifferent. Sure. And then we've all got these philosophies and theories entering the game. And then, boom, here comes Mike Tyson. Everybody's got a plan till they get punched in the mouth, right? <laughs> the lights are on. The stars may be in your eyes. <laughs> and you're just figuring out how to survive. Uh, as I like to say, when the fur is flying. You mentioned the word identity before we move on to uh, spotlighting a cowboy on the defensive side of the football. You mentioned the word identity. 
And I'm almost thinking they wound up with a black and blue identity last year. I, I felt like throughout the year that your two ball carriers, your two running backs, that is, were consistently your most reliable offensive skill position players. And then as the year went on, your quarterback kind of joined that ball carrier crew. And I, it feels weird to even consider that given the reputation of either a tech offense or say a Zach Kidley offense, I guess. Um, but I, I I think it kind of felt black and blue. You were like physical and, hey, we're going to pound you a little bit by the time it was all said and done. Am I wrong? I think the identity, like this sums up kind of the conversation we just had. We can sum up kind of how you played offense last year and in and, and ability to be versatile and do some different things in that you beat Iowa State 14 to 10. And then the next week you beat Oklahoma. What what was it? 54 to 48 or I, I don't I don't yeah. have the exact score. And, and so there's just not many teams in the country that are able to play two completely different styles. Yet you were. Um, I think it takes a lot of discipline and, and maturity to, to operate this way. Um, this is when, when tech basketball was really good. I mean, that was the beauty of it. You could be like this chameleon, like you want to run up and down the floor. Got it. You want to play a half court <laughs> game? We can do that too. Um, you know, wh wh whatever style you want to play, we will be better at it than you are. And I think that's kind of what, what's, what's fun about it. Um, but I, I think to me, you know, you ask about identity. I, I, I've yeah. probably been asked that a dozen times in the off season. Like, what is this, pro you know? And, you know, ultimately, I, I do think it was like toughness, but I, I guess if I if I had to single one or two things out, I would probably say that I thought fourth down was your identity and like your your riskiness gambling, baby. Your, your aggressiveness was yeah. your was your identity because and, and then I and then I would go with that, that it, that kind of goes hand in hand with your your culture or your brand or whatever, because that there's a yin and a yang there, I think, with, right. with that, because everybody's on the same page sometimes it worked 62 percent of the time sometimes it didn't um you wish you didn't have to do it as much because the the, the score dictated that you needed to because you were behind or there's only so many possessions left in a game but yeah I, I get your point Cowan and I think that uh that that's still to me kind of your identity is your culture and that fourth down aggressiveness type stuff I, I like that too because that may have been the most singularly unique uh, say, characteristic of Texas Tech that was the biggest catalyst to either what was viewed as a successful season or not a successful season because, man, we saw some wild circumstances. A lot to chew on there from what we saw last year, but can't wait to begin to find out what the story will include this year as they travel to Laramie, Wyoming. We're wrapping it up with the spotlight on a cowboy on the defensive side of the football for Wyoming. Talking something that I think physically will stand out to you whenever you're surveying the field, probably from the sideline, Chris, and for those of us watching on television from here in God's country. Uh, we'll get to that next as we wrap it up on Locked on Texas Tech. Glad to have you along for the ride on Locked On at Texas Tech. All off-season long throughout this initial game week and all the way on into Saturday night as it's the Red Raiders and Cowboys from Laramie, Wyoming. Before we're out of here this week, coming up on tomorrow's episode, we'll have a look around the Big 12 Conference as far as some season openers there. Also want to get to some things on the offensive side of the football and the challenge for Tim DeRuiter and his guys defensively. But as we wrap it up today, Chris, mostly a Wyoming defense, Texas Tech offense-themed kind of episode. Wanted to spotlight one cowboy that certainly has your attention. I know is going to have Zach Kit Kitley's attention, among others. Tyler Shuck on that list as well. Tell us about Colby Taylor, uh, who has got some attention elsewhere across the country. Yeah, so, you know, we, we first became aware of, uh, you know, Colby Taylor, I think, um, when we started looking at this team, I don't know, several, several weeks ago. And then I think it was stuck out big time whenever Bruce Feldman did that, that freaks list where he puts the top 100 guys. We had, you know, three Red Raiders on there. I think it was Hutchings, Tyler Owens, and oh, who else? Cowan, there was three uh, of Cole, them. right? Who, who was Miles it? Miles Cole. Yeah, Miles Cole, sorry, yeah. And so, but but Colby Taylor was very high on that list. I think in the top twenty-five, he was listed. And so you get you get your attention. You kind of do a double take when you see like there's a Wyoming dude on here. Well, th this is this is the college football in two thousand twenty-three because 
This is clearly one of their best players. I think he didn't actually start until the latter part of the season last year. May have actually didn't even start until the bowl game because he's a younger guy. Uh, but he kind of one of those young guys that just kept getting better and better. And I think with bowl prep, he kind of took over, um, kind of similar to Tyler Owens, uh, ironically enough, uh, at, at Texas Tech. But he's 6'4", 190. Does that sound familiar to you? Uh, because that that is kind of how you're, you know, the measurables of your starting corners right now. And it, it's funny because how I would describe Colby Taylor to you is that, one, he's from Texas. He's clearly – what I think Craig Bowl and everybody up there feels like is a quote unquote X factor. Although I, I heard coach bowl mention like four X factors. So he's got like X, Y, and Z. That's tic tac toe, baby. That's yeah, that's right. That's right. I think, yeah, the defensive line affecting Tyler Shuck was an X factor. Right. The crowd was an X factor. Uh, DQ <laughs> James, the backup running back that's coming off of ACL uh, and an injury. That's kind of a joystick. I think that they think he's an X factor. So lots of X factors. But yeah. Colby Taylor was the first one. <laughs> this is a guy. This is the best way I can I can tell you from a uh, as we talk to the tech fans that are listening. This is a guy that if he were to jump in the portal, I think you'd be all over. That that's the way I would sum up who who he is right now. Uh, that's the best compliment I guess I can pay him. I don't know if there's much else on the roster that like in my opinion that I would say, and, and I say Colby Taylor would be a lot of people would be after him in the portal, not just, right. not just you, but this is, you know, but this is kind of what's happening right out there in the world. It's like, it's like the, the programs, like the group of five programs are kind of like farm systems in a way. Um, and, and you've, you know, you, you've dabbled quite a bit there. Not that Syracuse is a farm system type school there in the ACC, but you have the San Diego state, you have the Fresno state, um, you know, uh, additions that are that are very key to, to More your, Western your, Kentucky, Western Kentucky. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But that's the best way I can describe to you on kind of how good this kid is or potentially could be when he's a closer to a finished product. But measurables, man, and Feldman had him listed high just because of that, uh, how fast he is and how, you know, how long he is and all that stuff. And so but the beauty of your offense, we were talking about earlier, if he's you know, okay, we're going to put him on whoever that doesn't, that shouldn't stress anybody out. Like we'll just go to these other three guys, you know, <laughs> I mean, like we, we the plenty of options and, and, and weaponry uh, to, to deploy. So anyway, but that's, that's, I think the best way I can describe this kid, but remember his name, he wears number six. Uh, I mean, and my guess is he'll be Jerron Bradley. That, that would seemingly be a good matchup because Jerron is six foot five, uh, but it's not many times where, you know, Bradley's only going to have about an inch uh, height advantage over the corner he's going against, but that is the case this time. That's right. And I enjoyed uh, reading about him in a Wyoming news article from uh, <laughs> just a few weeks ago. My favorite paragraph I wanted to share just of note uh, with the Red Raider faithful, because we're talking about this guy like, hey, you should know him, but there's a reason you don't know him. And that's the gist of the article here saying, quote, there's a reason Taylor's name hadn't been widespread. He has just three career tackles at Wyoming. and His most right. notable play in a Cowboys uniform was getting ejected for targeting early in last year's Arizona Bowl. So that's a highlight reel that sounds something like my time, probably, if I was on a college campus as a student athlete. So keep your eye on Colby Taylor and, hey, maybe show him something nice as far as red and black. When's the transfer portal open again? I, I don't know. Maybe just a friendly handshake after the game, Chris. You never know. Always be closing. And we're closing this sucker down now, man. Enjoyed it. As always, we've got one more to go before it is kickoff time, my friends. So uh, we'll see you then for the last round this week on Locked On Texas Tech. Chris, I'm talking to you specifically. Going to need a hand once again. Enjoy the time as always. Happy to oblige. Uh, looking forward to it one more time. Uh, and then we are at that point talking ball, talking results, hopefully a good one. Yeah. Uh, but we'll get into some of that, uh, you know, kind of leading up to it. A few more things uh, in our last visit with you all. But uh, keep hope alive, everybody. We're almost there. That's right. He's Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube or wherever you got this podcast so you never miss an episode as we get off and rolling. See you for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.